In this video, we're going to take a look at how to program your Minuter 3 or Minuter 4 pager. So after you have read the pager, you want to go up to View, User Data. It'll bring up this menu. On this first screen, the only thing you're going to be able to change is the system. You want to leave that to User. Even if you know your system, leave that one to User. Channel 1 is where you're going to enter your frequency. In this case, we have 154.145 entered. You would actually enter whatever frequency you needed here. Keep in mind, this is the frequency, frequency range of the pager. The pager cannot be programmed out of this range. So if you had a pager that was not in your frequency range, you would not be able to put your frequency into it the coding options. You want to set this to none. There are several options here, but none will give you all the settings. In this example, we're going to have tone 1 and tone 2. You could have additional call sets or tone sets, and you would enter them here. The bottom two tone sets here are for a single long tone, so you would enter your single long tone here. If you have a two-channel model, it will have a second tab here that says Channel 2. Channel 2 looks just like Channel 1. You would enter your frequency and your tones. The model options are shown here. The fixed alert you're going to want to set to off unless you want it to beep at full volume all the time. So if you set this to on, it ignores the volume setting and beeps at the full volume, but the voice will be at whatever the volume knob setting is. If you have a two-channel model, such as this pager, the priority scan can be on or off. If it's on, you should set the time to a half a second. If you set it longer than a half a second, you may miss your page. So you'd want to set that to on and then a half a second. If you set priority scan to off, it won't have that setting. Priority scan will scan back to the priority channel, which is channel one, every half second to check see if there's any traffic on channel one. If the pager happened to stop on channel two because channel two had traffic, this scanning back will cause the audio to intermittently cut out every half second as it checks back to channel one to see if there's any traffic. If you don't need to get paged on channel 1 every time, you could change this to off, but we recommend that you leave this to on. The alert duration, you're going to want to set the standard. What that does is it will beep until the tones end. If you set it to fixed, it will have a fixed alert length, and that may override the first part of your dispatch. Um, the person is speaking from your dispatch center, so you don't want that to happen. The safest and best way to do it is hit is leave that to standard STD. Call reminder, you should set that to off. On the uh, stored voice version, if you have a uh, stored voice message and you have not read it back yet, it will beep every couple of minutes to remind you that you haven't played it back. If you get a lot of messages, that can be annoying, so you want to go ahead and set this to off. Priority alert, most of you are not going to want this, so you can leave that to off. Privacy, this, this will disable the reset button. Um, you don't really want to do that, so you can leave that to off. Reset function, revert. If you have a non-stored voice pager, set this to revert. If you had a stored voice pager, in which in this case it's not, you would set this to revert n. The revert n keeps the pager on for a period of time once you get paged. And this is important if you have a stored voice pager because the stored voice will stop recording once the carrier is dropped. Oftentimes the carrier is dropped after the tones. You may not even be aware the carrier has been dropped, 
that it happens very often. And this will keep the pager recording for a period of time. Usually between five and seven seconds is good. Um, you can try different lengths depending on what you would like to do, but five to seven seconds is typical. So you can just start off with five seconds. And if you did have a stored voice pager up here, you'd want to choose 60 seconds or 40 seconds, uh, depending on uh, the model of the pager. Um, what this does is it sets the upper limit on the stored voice length. It will not allocate that length of time for each stored voice message. It sets the upper limit as to how long that message can go. If you set this to dynamic, you could have one long message that takes up all your stored voice length and that will actually delete your old messages. So to prevent that from happening, you can set a maximum stored voice length by selecting the stored voice length up at the top. The next tab over are your function switches. You can press the up and down arrows to scroll through them. It goes from 1 to 14. Um, well, actually 0 to 14, but the uh, settings here um, are up to you how you want to set them up. What this here means is it's channel F1, so that's your channel 1. The type of alert tone means it's going to beep. The on-off duty, you can just ignore that. No one really uses that much. The model is selective call. Selective call means it's going to be quiet until you get paged and then you will get alerted. If you had selected over here monitor, monitor will monitor all the traffic and pick up everything. Plus it will alert if your tones are sent off. So you can set these to whatever you would like. Each of these represents a switch position. So this is switch A, switch B, C, and D. Um, if you notice switch D is set up for scan. Number 12 is scan it's indicated down here. On the prior screen the scan was set up for priority and that affects this position D.